Hello, middle school. Welcome to your next art assignment. For this one, we are going to be delving deeper into the world of two-point perspective. Good times. Before we start, let's say our prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. To our Father, we pray, keep us creative and curious for all of our days. Amen. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay, so what we're doing today is basically you guys are going to create a diagram for yourself on how to create two-point perspective illusions from three different angles. The first is what we call street view. So right across the center of the paper here is the horizon line, okay? And this building is the same as what you created last week. It just doesn't have any windows on it. It's a simplified version. Um, we drew this line covering our horizon line. So we're looking at this straight on. We're also going to do a line below the horizon and one above the horizon to create buildings or boxes, if you will, both below and above the horizon. So this one, it's as if we're looking down onto it. Okay, and there's a, a technical name for this, or if we're looking down on something from above. Can you see this? Is it in view? Yes, it is. My amazing drawing skills here. It's a birdie. It's a birdie. Looking down, right? Because it's up in the sky. So if it's looking down, it's called birds. I view. So something where you're looking down and you're seeing the top of it from above, bird's eye view. This one, we're looking up at it from below the horizon line. It's way up there. This has another technical term. It's a worm, a little earthworm, living down in the ground, poking its little head out, looking up at the world. So when you're looking up at things, it is called worms eye view. And th this again right here, just your basic street view. So once you have these three views down with two-point perspective, you can pretty much create any scene that you would like with buildings, boxes, what have you, in perfect two-point perspective. So we're gonna learn how to do this today. Let's get started. Okay, so this is what you need this time. You need a piece of that thick white railroad board paper. Um, if you still have the one from your two-point perspective assignment the last time, you can just flip it over, use the back side. Or if you don't have that anymore, just get a new one out. This is the 11 inch by 14 inch paper. You're gonna need a ruler, a freshly sharpened pencil, and an eraser, just in case. So we're gonna start out by creating our horizon line and we're actually going to do it this way this time instead of the wide way we're going to go the tall way we know that this is about 14 inches long so half of 14 is seven we're going to put our horizon line right in the middle of our paper for this one it's not something that you always have to do but that's what's going to work best for this assignment so I made a tick mark down here at seven inches. I did the same up here at seven inches. Now I'm just gonna use my ruler, line up my tick marks, and create a perfectly straight line for my horizon. And I'm gonna label this my horizon line. Now I'm gonna determine two vanishing points towards the edges of my paper. It doesn't matter exactly where they are. 
I'm going to label these vanishing point. Now I'm going to create a couple, well, three small vertical lines to be the outside edges of my buildings. But first I'm gonna create a tick mark right in the middle of my paper. This is 11 inches wide. Half of 11 is five and a half. So tick mark here at five and a half. I'll do the same at my horizon line, a tick mark at five and a half, and the same up here, a tick mark at five and a half. So now, I'm gonna line up my ruler with the top of my page, go down one inch and do a two inch, so from one to three, a two inch line right there, leave my ruler there. I'm gonna go from six to eight, a two inch line that crosses over my horizon. Line these up. And a two inch line down here, actually probably easier to just flip over your paper. Line these up. Go one inch down, start your line at one inch, and go to three. So now you have three two inch lines. This one is going to be your worm's eye view because it's above the horizon line. This one is gonna turn into a building that is your street view. And this one, because it's below the horizon line, is going to be your bird's eye view. So, if it helps you to add dots at the top and bottom of each one of your lines, you can do that. And then it's just a matter of connecting your dots. All of your dots must lead to the vanishing points in both directions. So this way and this way. So if you are right-handed, you're gonna wanna hold your ruler in your left hand, line it up with your two dots, hold it down steady, and draw your line. It's always easier, as I've said before, to draw a line by pulling your pencil towards you instead of pushing it away from you. So rotate your paper as you need to to draw these lines. All right, and then your worm's eye view. Same thing, connecting the top of the line to the vanishing point and the bottom of the line to the vanishing point. Okay, so now you should have something that looks like this. The next thing that we need to do, like you did on your last one, is draw perfectly vertical lines to become the edges of these boxes. So, I am going to line up my ruler. So this center is at five and a half, that's where we put it. I'm just gonna go out to, I'm gonna go out an inch. So I'm gonna go to four and a half and six and a half. And I'm gonna do the same thing down at the bottom of my paper. Four and a half and six and a half. Because what I'm doing here is I'm creating tick marks to line up so that I know that I have perfectly vertical lines for the edges of my building. Of my buildings, I should say. So one line there, one line there. Line these up. Remember, this is 
the edge of your building. So you only have to draw between these two directional lines. We'll do the same thing over here. We're gonna make these tick marks. One was at, let's see, line up my five and a half right there. One was at four and a half, one was at six and a half. Line those up. So now all three of my boxes have their outer edges drawn. So the last thing that you need to do on this is you need to create the bottom of this building and the top of this building. And I'm not gonna show you how to do that. I want you to try to figure it out. And if you don't, don't get frustrated. It's okay, I will eventually show you. But I don't wanna show you right away because I want you to exercise your brains a little bit on this one. So hold on, I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna give you some clues. Okay, so first I just wanna make it really clear what we are dealing with here and where our buildings are. So I colored them in using colored pencils. Um, and now I'm gonna go over the exterior lines of each box with a Sharpie. Because I'm not erasing any of my directional lines. I think it's helpful to leave them to see how this was done. And when you're done with this, if it looks good, you can keep it as a resource so that if you ever wanna do two-point perspective again, you can look at this and it sort of explains how everything works. Um, if you color yours in, actually use colored pencils or crayons, but you don't want to do Sharpie over top of crayon. You definitely do not want to do tar Sharpie over top of oil pastel because that will completely ruin the tip of your Sharpie. So I would suggest colored pencils, just lightly coloring these in and then you can go over the edges with your Sharpie so that you know which parts of your line are actually part of your boxes. And then the lines that are in pencil are just your directional lines that show you how you arrived at having these boxes in perfect two-point perspective. So there you have it all clearly laid out. You can label this one, which is above the horizon line as your worm's eye view. This one below as your bird's eye view. Good. Hold on. And then this one is street view. Okay. So the street view is done. It doesn't need a roof. It doesn't need a floor because we're looking at it straight on and we can't see either of those things. However, your worm's eye view box needs some sort of a floor to finish out the box. And your bird's eye view box needs a roof to finish out the box. Now, there is a specific way to do this, and it's actually much easier than you might think. You might be thinking you need to triangulate and do some crazy math equations. It's much simpler than that. It's really just a matter of connecting the dots. And specifically, it's a matter of connecting these dots the outer corners of your box with your vanishing points. And you have to connect them in a certain way using your ruler that will create the roof of this box here. And then the same with the worm's eye view. It is the bottom two corners here. You need to connect those 
with your vanishing points using your ruler in a certain way. You're just gonna create a couple of lines and voila, you will have the roof and floor of these two buildings. I'm not gonna show you how to do it. I want you to try to figure it out. And if you do, take a picture of it and let me know. If you don't figure out, that's okay. You can just take a picture of this up to this point and you will get full credit for that too, okay? I don't want you to stress out over this, but it is a good little mental challenge. So that's it. That is the end of this video. That's the end of this assignment. So something is missing off of this, right? That's why there's a question mark here. You need to add some sort of a floor here. And like floor, I mean, just complete the box. Not, not any sort of, and by roof, I mean just complete the box. You don't need to create some sort of fancy roof. You just need a rectangle, rectangle, a rectangle, a rectangle up here to complete your box. So try to figure it out. Try to figure it out. Have fun. Challenge that brain of yours. And send me what you got. I will see you later.